I now give the floor to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lacroix. Merci, Madame la Thank you, Madam uh, President. Madam President, I want to uh, thank you for this opportunity to brief the members of the Security Council and present the latest report of the Secretary General on the situation in Mali and to share with you the latest developments uh, regarding the political security and humanitarian situation in the country. The past three months uh, saw the holding of uh, presidential elections, which, as has been acknowledged by uh, all electoral observers, uh, took place in a peaceful uh, environment. I would like to uh, hail the efforts of the Prime Minister, Sumelu Bubeke Maiga, to promote a constructive political dialogue throughout this process. I also want to congratulate our colleague, the Special Representative of the Secretary General, Mr. Anadif. His uh, good office has played a key role to ease tensions. The smooth uh, holding of the elections demonstrated the political maturity of the Malian people, also the support of the political class uh, for the democratic process. In a particularly volatile security context, the or successful organization of these elections underscored an important positive feature of the peace agreement. The consensus established among the signatories, which uh, uh, played a key role uh, in uh, where the armed group signatories to the agreement uh, ensured security in various areas of the north of the country. This consensus no doubt played a key role in uh, allowing the elections to go ahead uh, based on the electoral timetable and without major security incidents in spite of troubles in the north. At the same time, these elections were supposed to be sustained by broader progress in implementing institutional reports, in particular making operational interim authorities, constitutional reform, reform of the security sector, or the process of demobilization, dis disarmament, and reintegration, DTR. By the way, the important role that MINUSMA played in securing the electoral uh, sites underscored uh, the uh, weak level of operationalization of the very of the various sites of the operational coordination mechanism. The, these delays in implementing the agreement, uh, along with the uh, stagnation of certain in initiatives that are crucial to strengthening political dialogue, such as the Charter for National Reconciliation, underscored the lack of national cohesion. Uh, various di uh, differences of position on the electoral law or in the, or in the electoral register further accentuated uh, challenges of the results by the opposition. Uh, Madam President, I'm convinced that discussions for a possible uh, postponement of legislative elections will create a, a climate of consensus uh, with a view to a successful uh, elections, constitutional reform, and electoral governments. These elections will be a new test for the cohesion of the political class and Malian society. I encourage the government and the opposition to engage in a constructive political dialogue based on inclusivity and bearing in mind the national interest. I also encourage the Malian political actors to take advantage uh, of these elections to uh, create a more representative parliament by promoting the candidatures of young people and women. On this point, I welcome the composition of the new government, which, uh, according to the Malian legislation, is uh, composed of 30 percent of women. Madam President, in this context, the Pact for Peace demanded by the Security Council in its Resolution 2423 and signed on the 15th of October during the meeting of the Monitoring Committee of the Agreement between the Government and the United Nations is an essential tool to encourage the efforts of the Malian Party, supported by the international community, in order to accelerate the implementation of the agreement and uh, lend a new momentum to the peace process uh, by focusing on inclusivity. The pact does not replace the peace agreement. It underscores the importance of implementing the key this provisions of the agreement, as mentioned in paragraph 4 and 5 of the resolution and the roadmap adopted by the parties on the 22nd of March of this year. Progress achieved in implementing the pact, uh, as well as the key provisions of the agreement, will be submitted to the Security Council six months after the uh, President takes office. An absence of progress, these elements, uh, along with the work of the independent observer, will constitute a solid base to consider uh, additional measures. On this point, I welcome the holding of a high-level meeting on Mali and the Sahel on the 26th of September on the margins of the General Assembly, which made it possible to reassert re, uh, the central role of the agreement. It was also an opportunity to underscore the complementarity of the political response in Mali and the support uh, for the G5 Sahel and the integrated strategy of the United Nations for the Sahel. 
the same time, I was encouraged during my recent visit in Mali by the uh, determination expressed by all parties uh, uh, to support the peace agreement and accelerate its implementation. The creation of a special ministry in charge of implementing the agreement um, and, uh, is a, an important signal by the government uh, that it uh, wishes to uh, achieve this goal. Madam President, I want to share with the Security Council my extreme concern about the security situation in Mali, in particular in the center of the country, a region where, which during the two rounds of the presidential elections concentrated 80% of the voting polling stations affected by insecurity. The Secretary General noted in his last report that this three-month period was uh, the most uh, deadly since the uh, establishment of MINUSMA in 2013, where some 287 civilians uh, were killed, um, using IEDs and mines. This situation continues to uh, restrict access uh, to humanitarian actors uh, and limit the uh, scope of operations. Uh, uh, this aggravates the humanitarian situation the, uh, and also the human rights situation. It might uh, perpetuate a sense of frustration within the Malian population, which uh, has uh, not really seen a peace dividend from the peace agreement. The reestablishment and extension of the authority of the state should be a priority in order to contribute to uh, uh, producing a peace dividend that is concrete and measurable on the ground. On this point, as requested by the Security Council in Resolution 2423, MINUSMA and the country team of the United Nations have begun to elaborate a comprehensive strategic framework in support of the uh, program uh, of comprehensive uh, securing of the central regions of the of the country. This framework will make it possible to coordinate their actions in support of governance, peace, stabilization, in order to better improve their impact on the ground in a comprehensive way. President, we have also been witnessing over the past few months an intensification in violent extremist attacks in neighboring Burkina Faso. Insecurity is spreading fast across and inside borders, with consequences ranging from the forced displacement of local communities to the erosion of state authority and of the delivery of basic social services. This dire situation threatens not only the security of the peoples of Mali and the Sahel, but international security as a whole. We are all running against the clock. In this context, the G5 Sahel Joint Force, to which the Secretary General continues to bring his steadfast support, remains as relevant as ever. It features at the heart of a regionally driven solution to addressing instability in Mali and the region that must be complemented by initiatives aimed at improving governance, resilience, and development. Yet, if the joint force is to achieve any positive result in its fight against terrorism and transnational organized crime, it will require sustained and at scale support from its international partners. Moreover, given the, the interoperability and complementarity of the joint force with MINUSMA, it will be important to continue to evaluate the impact of the mission against the progressive operationalization of the joint force. This is an aspect that will be reflected in a six-month progress report requested by the Security Council, which will be submitted in March 2019. And finally, Madam President, before concluding my remarks, I would wish to draw this Council's attention to a more hopeful sign amidst this challenging situation. We are indeed pleased to report that the last month have shown a consistent and marked decline in the number of peacekeepers killed or injured despite sustained attack by violent extremist groups. While we may not at this stage attribute this decline uh, to the impact, or at least exclusively to the impact of the implementation of the Center's cruise report recommendations, this is, of course, an encouraging trend. We must, or however, and, and of course remain very cautious, we, don't, we do not know what tomorrow will bring, um, and we will certainly continue our efforts to change mindset and improve training and equipment for our peacekeepers to continue to deliver the mission's mandate in the best conditions possible for their security and effectiveness. Merci beaucoup.